Good morning, fellow streakers. I beat you to it. That was beautiful. Welcome. Happy day. It is Hello. such a good day. I'm so excited to be here. Are you? I'm excited to be here today. Really? How I come? Am. I don't know. I'm excited what we have to talk about. There's a lot of good things. And I'm excited. December is fun. I'm excited for the holidays. I'm excited for school to be coming to a, to a close. Well, for us, we're in person. So maybe other people are feeling different. Yeah, they I, may be like, could, could, could we get school, could yeah, we get school back in session, I haven't please? had my kids home a lot, so I'm excited to have them home, but maybe I've always And all the kids the this Christmas are coming home. All Every of my children. Every single all one of them. This is the first time plus in... Plus spouses. Right. In how many years? I think four, what were we looking at? Four or five years? Something yeah, like that? Where so we get them all for in one place at one time. One time. Yeah. I'm so, maybe that's why I'm excited. I'm just happy today. <laughs> happy to talk. Happy to be here. Excited. As we've been looking at the month of December, we've been following a theme, which is what streaking has given you or what streaking has given us or how streaking has impacted your life. And And there are actually three stories. We're not going to tell you all three right up front. We're only going to talk about one that um, has really inspired us. Three stories that have inspired us, but we're only going to talk about one of those stories this time. Right. 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 To get started, though, what I thought we would do is and wanted to throw this to you is I what if you what you throw <laughs> what is it what is it that you have on your list because you've talked about in previous podcasts that you have a list of things that you've thought about but also that others have thought about in regards to what streaking has done for them right and how it's helped them kind of the gift of streaking so and we've talked a, about a so few how, of them yeah we've talked about a few of them but how many things are on your list right now i have 20 20 things 20 things okay so what i thought is Run through the list. I won't interrupt, I promise. Just run through the list of everything on there and then let's and then we'll go back to a couple of them and tell the story. What if I struggle to get through the list because I'm used to you interrupting, which is actually more giving me feedback. So feel free to interrupt if you need to, but well, I'll thank get you. through I the list. I appreciate that. One of the things that, you know, we talked about on a podcast a couple of times ago about the different little sayings that we have in our marriage. One of them was you know, we go together or we stop. Mm-hmm. Another one was we're on the same team. Mm-hmm. There's one that we came up with recently that I think is really apropos for the situation that you're just describing. We're playing tennis. We're playing tennis. Exactly. Our conversation is a tennis match. And so sometimes we're playing the long game. In other words, you have a lot to say or I have a lot to say. And so we're lobbing it back and forth. It's going to take a long time for the ball to get to your side. But other times we're, we're playing the right, short up game. Next to, right up next to the net. And so we interrupt each other. <laughs> And because we're, we both get excited about it. And so we're back and forth. And sometimes you're at the net and I'm back at the baseline. And sometimes I'm at the net and back at the baseline. And right now, if you think we play tennis. We don't play we tennis. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to play tennis. <laughs> right. But maybe, I think it's funny that we pick things that we know very little about. No, we're that's not the right way to say it. We're spectators. Yes. There are things that yeah, we're... Spe- we, we know very little about it. About the strategy of it and about all the different things that go into it and how professionally, I mean, how amazing people are. We we play it. We know it casually, though. Yeah, we know it casually. But in conversation, we're really good tennis players in conversation. This is our we're conversation conversational tennis match. Tennis players, exactly, and we're good. Or at we're it. tennis. We're we're we play tennis in our conversation. There you there go. We go. <laughs> you look at you always look at it, and they're like. What in the world did we venture into (laughs) this time? My list. That's how we got started. Here we go. Because one of the things about Jamie that I love is that hyperbole is nowhere in her vocabulary. It's there a little bit. A little bit. (laughs) No, there is not. (laughs) Anytime I start to go into the hyperbole, hyperbole, and it's anywhere outside the realm of... (laughs) I like to pay attention to the details sometimes, and hyperbole ignores details and acts like there are no details. <laughs> that's true. It's just a million times and that's or why the it... best thing I've ever seen. And exactly. I'm like, is it really the best thing you've ever seen? No. And you know what? <laughs> that is true. I know. You ask that question. <laughs> we balance each other out. Which well, is though. great. I love it. Okay. <laughs> through your list. Here we go. Through my right, list. I'm being quiet. So the first few that we've talked about a little bit, having patience and growth was the very first thing on my list. So I'd say give them number one. <clears throat> I'd number say one go, was go, yep. patience and growth. Number two was a way to develop a growth mindset. Number three was permission to start small and start today. Just a little note. I mean, I have these numbered, but they didn't come in any particular order on purpose. I just wrote down as I thought about things. And not only you thought about it, but as you received things as well. Yeah, and I then mean, because as you other got people a whole bunch of stuff. added to my list, yes. Right. 
Number four, a way to develop consistency. Number five, streaking gives me self-credibility, knowing I can be consistent and have been consistent. Number six, a way to do the things that are important to me every day or every week. Number seven, a way to work on character traits and measure progress, measuring the intangibles. Number eight, a way to overcome it a lack so of motivation. It is so hard for me not to interrupt right now. <laughs> and I just did. There are so many things I want to say to everything that you just said through list number seven. But keep going. Okay. I'm being quiet. A way to overcome a lack of motivation and then create motivation. Pause for I'm impact. <clears throat> Don't, Im- don't interrupt her. She's a on a roll. time to ponder. Okay, I liked this one. I'm saying that to myself. <clears throat> You're going to interrupt yourself. I have a little yourself. frog in my throat. Okay. A time to ponder often who I really want to be and think about what I need to do to become that person. That one was kind of fun to think about because it helped me realize that since I started streaking and other people too, as I've talked to other people, that you're I'm consciously and they are consciously thinking on a pretty consistent basis who they want to be and how they can, the things that they can do to, to get to that, to work on that. Okay. I interrupted myself. Number 10. Now you're playing tennis against a wall. A community, <laughs> a community of friends against the garage. Against the garage. There it is. A community <laughs> of friends. it's not against a wall. We're not professionals. <laughs> no. It's the garage. <laughs> Just to get out. We're the garage tennis players. A community of friends and a way to meet new people. Number 11 was a connection to family and the courage to make a phone call. That was my own personal experience where when I found my grandpa Gould that I attribute to having a streak. I don't think that would have ever happened if I didn't have a streak. A way to encourage others in the small things that they are doing to improve. I've loved that one too because, okay, you're right. We're, I can't interrupt, but I, what I was going to say is that it helps me to be happy with people's small progress too, to look at the small progress or the small things that people are doing and be like, that totally counts. That's great. And to be encouraging. I've loved that. Number 13 was less guilt and more confidence. I'm super happy that that one wasn't my number one, that that I had all these other things I was excited about beforehand. And then I was like, you know what? I've got less guilt, more confidence. This one was from a friend. So I'm going to read it the way that she sent it to me. I have always struggled with reading. I mess up words and and have a hard time concentrating on what is happening on the page. Ever since I started my reading streak, I can see myself improving. It is incredible how excited I am to read and how much better I am getting at it. Love that one. This next one was number 15 was a productive life. I feel so productive just by doing laughably simple things on a consistent basis. That was also from a friend. Number 16, <clears throat> 16 was the accountability. Let's see. Uh, this was also from a friend. Accountability with the app. So um, he feels that he has greater accountability from using the app every day. That's 17, the streaking app, the which streaking you can find app, at yep. Google Play or at the Apple App Store. App Store. Yep called streaking just streaking just so you know just so you know 17 was small victories every single day 18 was an excitement when looking at self-improvement i like that one 19 was a way to measure growth that is tricky to quantify that one was also from a friend which is kind of kind of back up with the measuring progress and intangibles and number 20 was dedication that was also from someone else that they felt i love that you specify which were from you and which were from other people, even though they could all be from other people and they could all, all be, be from, from you. Friend. And that's true because there's a lot of the things that I had written down that I'd also talked with other but this people is, about. This is what I talk about. In your mind, this is what I love is it's like, no, that was not me that wrote that one. That was a friend and I need to make sure and specify that. I want everyone to have a clear and concise understanding. Which is beautiful. It's just what I, I love it, actually. It's just fun so to listen to. List. Hey, how did I do? I didn't interrupt that much. We did. You did great. So the question that I have for you, you stopped and paused on a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go back to, and so which of those really stuck out? Which were, which were some of the ones that you'd like to delve, delve into? Um, which of them stuck out? Well, I've, I've loved all of them. Actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about the story that we, or so we were on a podcast for Megan Sumerell and she released that podcast yesterday. Uh Uh-huh. But when she released it, she put a a little blurb on IGTV, Instagram TV, and she talked about a streak that she had set for herself since we recorded the podcast. And I loved what she said. So she 
When we did the podcast, she was really excited. It was fun to talk to her. That was one of my favorite podcasts that we've done because she was so fun to talk to. Mm-hmm. Little shout out, Megan, if you're listening. It was great. We loved it. We, we had, had such a great time. We did have such a great time. And she does her own podcast on and, work-life balance. Yes. And being productive and organizing. And she's developed a planner that she sells, a top planner that helps women to be able to organize and be that's what like like my one, you know, less guilt and more confidence. I think she helps us to not feel so overwhelmed and to be more planned in the things that we're doing. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so on her IGTV, what she wrote, talked about was her streak of writing one sentence a day. And what I loved that she said is she said, I've always wanted to write and I've had a goal to write, but it seemed so big and so out there and so far away, kind of, so to speak, from where she was. And so when she talked to us about doing streaking, she talked about being able to, sorry about that. (laughs) She talked about being able to set a streak for one sentence a day of writing that she's That was one of our children interrupting. That was calling from schools. Calling from school and I just ignored them. (laughs) Yes, you did. You just put it on ignore. We'll come back to that. She was saying that she wrote one sentence a day. That was her streak, was to write one sentence a day, inspired by what we had talked about on um, our pot on your streaks, your podcast. Our what podcast. do you mean on on our podcast? What do you? Th- <laughs> You're like this is not coming out, is this it? This is not going well. <laughs> You're looking at it, going, "Where am I going? What is happening?" See, this is what distracted. happens too. You got distracted because a child was calling from school. Story so of my you, life. And so you're trying I to have, figure it out. I have parental ADHD. <laughs> That's right. Which I truly believe someone should do a study on because I think it's a real thing. It's a real thing. That I was, you know. This so let's. Is, this so, is working mom's so life. So this is us. We are one take, and so you're right here with us in the middle of this. Let's go back to it. So Megan Sumerell, she invites us on a podcast. She learns about streaking, realizes that there's goals, streaks. Habits, habits and routines. routines, all of those things come together for her. And she recognizes that streaks are different than habits and routines. And this is the thing that she talked about in her IGTV is that it was so different to recognize it and to see it as something that empowered you to do something that you couldn't do before. She always wanted to write, but she looked at herself as not a writer. So that's what I loved about it is she said, I, through streaking, am rewriting the story that I tell myself. I'm rewriting who I am, so to speak. Where she said before... I think we need to pause on that right there for just a second. I am rewriting who I am. And the things that I tell myself, that's what I loved about what she said. She said, I've always thought, well, I'm just not a writer. And she said, now, because I have this streak where I'm writing a sentence every day, every day I'm like, well, I'm a writer. She goes, I'm not going around telling people I'm a New York Times bestseller. But she said, I am rewriting the way that I think about myself, that I am no longer able to say, well, I'm not a writer. Because now I'm looking at it and going, well, I write every day. This is something I think that is so crucial for all of us to understand is the self-talk that's been going on. I've been reading a book, uh, Daniel Pink's book on To Sell as Human, and he talks about the self-talk that we have with each other. Or with our, with each other, with ourselves. <laughs> with our multiple <laughs> with our, personalities. With our multiple personalities we go along. And there's negative self-talk and positive self-talk. And both are necessary. In fact, one of the things he talks about is that if you get too much on the positive side, if you start going toward, you know, just everything is is fantastic, roses and flowers and rainbows and unicorns, that it it removes you from reality in such a way that you're not really working with who you truly are. You're you're in fact ignoring some of those things. Whereas if you go on the other side of it where your self-talk is negative, and it's negative all the time, that can bring you down. However, you can't have one without the other. It's a balance between the two. And what I love about what you were saying as far as, and what Megan has discovered and what we have discovered is that your self-talk, the thing that is the negative, in other words, I'm not a writer, and she keeps on repeating that to herself, and why is she not a writer? Or why am I not a writer? Or why are you not a writer? It's because when we look at it, We say to ourselves, oh, this is so hard to come up with a sentence or to come up with a paragraph or to come up with a page. And writers, they're just writing all the time. They crank out pages and pages and pages and pages when in actuality, it's really just one sentence. That's all it takes is one sentence consistently to be a writer. I was thinking, and I wanted to ask you about this too, because I was thinking about this this morning 
I'm thinking, what is it that stops us from doing things? And I look at it and I'm like, well, first of all, there are a lot of really great writers out there. Absolutely. And there's a lot of, there's People millions that have dedicated of books. Their time That's and not hyperbole. No, it's not. There are literally millions of books, which means millions of people have written and published a book in one form or another. And then, like you said, there's ones that are just really fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it can seem daunting to look at where I am and where I'm starting as to where they are in their journey. And it's so it can be overwhelming, I think. And I think that in that overwhelming, when you're looking at it, I'm looking at where they are in their journey and comparing myself to them in my journey, in their journey, seeing myself come up completely short, right. that I'm not even there. I'm not even ready to, to go as far as that's concerned. And when I look at that and I come up completely short, then I get a little bit dismayed and I don't want to even start. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. You've brought up, I'm having to write things down because my mind is exploding of all these cool things that you're saying about. So when, when you were talking earlier, because I want to get back to Megan and I want to talk a little bit about your writing streak. But as you were talking about the self-talk and that you can't have too much of the positive, that was awesome. I'd love to read what you read about that. Mm -hmm. It's a great book. Daniel yeah. Pink, he writes all about it, To Sell is Human. Okay, To Sell is Human. Okay, yeah. I'd love to read that. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking... I, it, it, it's part of my streak right now. It's my nonfiction book streak. Nice. Yeah. Read at least one paragraph daily. That's a good streak. Yeah, that's what I do. I was thinking that how sometimes frustrating it is. I wasn't reading at all because that's one of the things too when you look at it. Reading Sorry, I or got writing. It. I'm, I'm playing the short game for just a second. I mean, I look at, for example, a lot of people that are great readers and they read a book a week or, you know, a, a, book, a, a book a week, book a month. I mean, they're reading hundreds of books. And that was not me. And that was, you know, the friend that we both, our mutual friend there saying, that's not me either. Right. And so reading at least one paragraph a day or even one sentence a day. All of a sudden, it takes away all of the, all of the inhibition that I have, and I recognize that you know what? If I can do anything, I can do at least this, and I can do at least once a day. I mean, how long? And I challenge myself: How long can I do this at least once a day? And that starts to rewrite who I am, one line of code at a time. We work. With, I work a lot with developers, and developers. You look at the programs that we have and the different applications that we have on the phones and on the tablet computers and on regular computers and everything else, all of that was written one code, one line of code at a time. Mm -hmm. It was one instruction set at a time. And the reason why I bring up coding is because that's what we're doing with ourselves is talking to ourselves, encoding our lives with the statements of who we want to be and then doing the things necessary to be that person. And I love that through streaking, there was an actionable thing that Megan was able to start and that through starting that, She's starting to rewrite the way she thinks about herself. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was thinking in, in this is that it helps take away some of those comparisons sometimes. I think the comparison can stop us from starting things too because we look at how much is out there that's fantastic and we look at where we are and, and, and maybe we look at where we want to be too and we just think it's, it's too much. It's insurmountable. I don't really see how I'm going to go from where I am to where I'm going to be. But having a streak takes away that comparison because now you're not focused on getting to this specific place. You're just focused on your inputs. You're focused on what you're going to do each day. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I look at it and I think, I think the best writers in the world probably started with one sentence. But we don't know that because they don't talk about it a lot or it was something they liked doing. So maybe they didn't even notice that they started with the one or it was so long ago that they don't remember or who knows, one but the they started really with one like sentence. Is the whole idea of a highlight reel. A highlight reel has in it just the highlights have happened, and it takes two to three minutes. That highlight reel took three hours to gather as far as the highlights that are there, but the only thing that we really see are the highlights. So mm -hmm. an individual who has been writing for a long time, the highlights is the are, are the books that they produce. Right. And that's the highlight reel. And we think that, oh, that's it. But I know from our own experience of writing, that was 25 manuscripts and hours and hours of e editing. And then to produce this book, which we really love and enjoy. And it was, uh, it just, it's hard thing, to say it was representative of one sentence at a time, but truly that was the streak. It was. That was truly how it started. And I love that now we have a book, but I also love how many times we've been like, oh, we should have added that to the book. Oh, we should add this to the book. Oh, we should... That it keeps going, that it's something that's continuing to move forward. 
And I look at you and I was thinking back as I was thinking about Megan in writing and your writing streak and and how much you've loved right now. I look at you and I'm like, you are writing all the time. Yeah. You really are. You're writing in your journal. You're writing letters to our kids. You're writing letters to other people. Just so that we're not hyperbolistic. I actually don't write in a journal. That's you. But I write letters and I write articles That's and right. stuff. You don't write in your Just journal. So you That's know. my journal. I don't have that streak. You're writing every day. So I yeah. guess it's writing a letter to people. You mm-hmm. write papers now. I do. You write a lot for work that yep. you. So I was going to ask you, because I was thinking back to our early years of marriage, and I'm like, I don't ever remember you enjoying writing. Mm-hmm. Like I think back of college and I don't, you did not enjoy writing. Did you? No, not really. And so at what point did this kind of, transition into something where I look at it and I'm like, you are writing every day now, Mm -hmm. obviously, because you have your streak to write a sentence every day. But even past that, it's something that literally I look at you and I'm like, you have become a writer. I I think that so to so in rewriting our lives to Megan's point, right, what she had said, I never viewed myself as a writer. That was me as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about a couple of podcasts ago how I didn't even think I had a brain. I mean, Mm -hmm. no, I said that. (laughs) Oh, you said that. And it confirmed something inside me. Right. You do have a brain. (laughs) Thank you, hon. Sarcasm. But not good. We're not good. No, not good. But one of the things that, but my own self-talk was, oh, that's so hard. And then to, to, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? To emphasize the negative self-talk. I would set these audacious goals, like mm-hmm. I'm going to write a chapter this week, or I'm going to write, you know, a page a day, and it was just way, way out of the realm of what it is that I could even imagine at that point in time. And so that reinforced the idea that I'm not a writer. Mm-hmm. And until I decided that, you know what, no, it's it's got to be something simple, so simple that there's no reason not to do it. Laughably simple. That's when all of a sudden it came and. Now, all of a sudden, like Megan had said, I've rewritten this whole script in my life to say that, yeah, I'm not a New York Times bestselling writer. I'm not any of those things, but I am a writer. I am a writer. And the writer that I am is I write at least one sentence every day. So and that's what literally, streaking, yeah, it's been literally awesome. been one sentence a day. That's how it's changed, which I find amazing. It is amazing. Well, that thanks everyone fast. for joining us today. It's been absolutely fun. We are looking forward to talking with you again, where we'll continue on the gifts that streaking has given us. If you'd like to share with us the gifts that Streaking has given you, let us know at Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y at streakingmastery.com or Jamie, J-A-M-I at streakingmastery.com. Until we talk again, keep keep streaking. That make the life we live worth living among the rush. Do one push up, become a better you. It's the small and simple things. That make you grow into what you're hoping You're in a hurry 